Lesson 4 of this unit, we're going to be talking about the different phases of matter and how they are related to heat. So we'll be talking about solids, liquids, and gases. We'll be examining the intermolecular forces that they exhibit. We'll be talking about phase changes and ultimately what this new word enthalpy means. So solids are going to be our foundation for talking about matter. So when we think about solids, they're always going to be something of a definite shape. It's never going to change on you unless some sort of reaction occurs to it. It will always be the same volume. Because of that, the molecules are always jam-packed right next to each other, but they are always vibrating. So you have to think of them as a tightly packed geometric shape. Chemists call this a crystal lattice structure. All crystals, or all solids, have a very geometric shape to them. However, all of the atoms inside of a solid sample are vibrating at a very quick rate. If you were to increase the temperature of a solid, they would vibrate faster. But if you were to cool a solid, they would vibrate slower. Liquids are going to be the second phase of matter that we talk about. Liquids, as we know, take the shape of any container. They have a very definite volume, and the liquid molecules are constantly in a random motion. They're not going to be jam-packed next to each other like the solid phase. However, they can increase or decrease the kinetic speed of their particles depending on the heat changes that the particles are experiencing. So if you were to heat up a sample of water, the particles will move at a faster rate. Vice versa, if you were to cool down a sample of water, the molecules will slow down. Finally, the last phase of matter is going to be gas. Gases, as we know, fill the shape of any container that they're in. Because of the properties of a gas, they have no definite volume. Gases can be compressed. This means that they can take up a very large space or a very small space, but always contain the same number of molecules in either sample. Gases also have the maximum random motion. This means that they are spinning, vibrating, and bouncing off of all matter that they encounter. Like liquids, you can increase or decrease the speed of the particles by changing the amount of heat that the sample is given. And unlike all the other phases of matter, they have the furthest intermolecular space between the particles. So when we look at our samples on the left, that's our solids. In the middle is our liquid, and on the right is our gases. And as you're noticing, as it says in the very top arrow, as you go from left to right, you're increasing the temperature. And as you increase the temperature, the particles break apart from each other, thus forming the liquid and eventually the gas phase. But if you look on the bottom, it says that as you increase the intermolecular forces between the particles, you go backwards. You go from your gas to liquid back to your solid state. So therefore, solids have the highest intermolecular forces with very close particles, while liquids have a medium intermolecular force. They have semi-close particles. And finally, gases have the lowest intermolecular force, which means they have very far particles. We see this commonly with different types of elements. But some elements that stand out are going to be the ones from group 17. Group 17 is called our halogens. And the halogens exhibit different properties. If you were to go down group 17, you would encounter fluorine, not pictured, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Chlorine is always considered a gas, while bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid. As you descend down group 17, the strength of the intermolecular forces increase. And as it increases, you go from a, you go from a gas to liquid to solid state of matter. So when a solid becomes a liquid and then that liquid becomes a gas, we call that an endothermic phase change because energy must be absorbed for the phase change to occur. So to go between the different phases, heat must be added. So when a solid goes to a liquid, we call that fusion, otherwise known as melting. And when a liquid goes to a gas, we call that vaporizing. Also, solids to gases is called sublimation. These are all examples of endothermic phase changes. Therefore, when we look at a phase change diagram, the bottom axis represents time, the amount of time that it took for the sample to undergo the phase change, while on the y-axis it tells us the temperature at which, dif at which different changes occur. So we're noticing that our sample is starting off very cold. It starts off at below 0 degrees Celsius. And as it reaches the 0 degrees Celsius line, that's when our sample starts to melt. And as it's melting, we're at a phase change equilibrium. At this stage, we are 50% solid, and now we're going to be 50% liquid. 
will be 50% liquid until we reach our next point, which we're going to be calling our vaporizing point, otherwise known as our boiling point. At this point, our liquid sample is at equilibrium with the next phase called the gas phase. Now, as you notice, the line segments where the name solid, liquid, and gas, those are the only points on this graph where the temperature is increasing. During the melting and vaporizing phase change, there is no change in temperature. So when we go from a gas to a liquid to a solid, we call that an exothermic phase change. This means that we have to get rid of energy or heat for this phase change to occur. So if a gas was to become a liquid, it would have to cool down. So that means we have to remove heat. And when we put water into the freezer, we're taking the heat away so we can make water turn into ice. So we call the removal of heat from a gas condensation, otherwise known as condensing, and we call the removal of heat from a liquid solidification. We can also call it freezing. Another phase change is when a gas turns itself into a solid. When a gas removes its heat fast enough, it can deposit itself through the act of deposition into the solid phase of matter. So looking at an exothermic phase change, it's the same exact thing as a endothermic phase change, except now we're going to be starting off at a higher phase of matter. So as the gas is cooling or as it's losing kinetic energy, it eventually will return to the equilibrium phase change between gas and liquid. We call that condensing. As it continues to lose more heat, it will cool itself down to the zero degrees freezing point. At this temperature, that's when the liquid will become equilibrium with the solid phase. At this point, we now have our solid. Enthalpy, which is represented by an H, is the heat released or absorbed by a reaction at constant pressure. So if you're undergoing a phase change or a chemical reaction, the change in the heat, which we've been calculating thus far as Q, can be symbolized as a delta H. Delta H means a change in heat. Enthalpy means change in heat. 